Hello, hello, Pisces. Welcome to your mid-2020 overview reading and your August reading for this year. This is good for you if you're a sun, moon, or rising Pisces. And before we get started, take a moment to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Onyx Healing. And if you would like to see more of the work that I do, check out the description box. All of the decks that I've used are listed in there as well. And I'm going to lay this out and then we will get started. Okay, so here's how this reading works. This is the second half of 2020. So July is over here and December is over here. I'm going to fill in the gaps of this timeline with another deck, but that is the skeleton for this reading. So let's start with your oracle cards first. We have love. Ooh, okay. Love comes in many different forms, right? Love is an energy. Love is... Basically, it, it's the it's the ultimate end all be all vibration. Like if you no longer had a body, if you were completely done evolving, like if you stripped away everything, this is ultimately all there would be. And so, the evolution that we are in it, mo it moves us closer to this. So we experience this in different forms, different ways as we're embodied. And so I'm getting that this is the biggest focal point or the theme that's going to carry through the second half of 2020. So love, connection. Yes, it, uh, of course, relationships are like the first place we go to mentally, right? And that that is correct, that, that relationships can inspire this. Or like if, if you... Um, are a parent, right? It's a new layer of love that becomes uncovered as you evolve into parenthood. So whatever is happening throughout the second half of 2020, you're accessing more of this within yourself, more love within yourself, more love in relationship, more love wherever it is that you're going, making your way back to this time and time and time again. So enjoy this, have fun with it. This is a practice as well. And you can think about love, I know this is silly, but it's kind of like money where we have different thresholds for how much we can hold on to and how much we can um, keep almost. And so we can incrementally increase the amount of love we're capable of receiving and holding as we go. It's a, it's a practice. And then we have the healer, major healing. And th this is the archetypal healer, right? I would fall into that category, except I have, I have the wounded healer archetype. I digress. So this has to do with your ability to heal yourself. Also, it might be time to invest in a healer of your choice or work with some sort of practitioner who can support you in your healing, right? As we heal, we access more love within ourselves. As we kind of dismantle and rewrite and rework the wounds that we have, we access more love in that process as we give to ourselves and show up for ourselves in the process of healing. We access more love. It, it's, it's how this whole thing works because we strip away the layers that have been conditioned and this is what lives underneath. And then we have birth. Find your sacred creative womb space, whether it's time tools or a literal space. Seek the appropriate midwife. Trust the process. All will be revealed in due time. And I think whatever statement landed for you with this is what you needed to hear. I'm not going to overread this one. Now let's start with the first quarter. This is going to run until mid-August in terms of time frame. We have the Empress. This is about embodiment, giving to yourself in Divine Feminine. Is this not? I'm going to move these off screen because it's confusing my camera. So the Empress is about embodying Divine Feminine. It's about healing Divine Feminine, right, within yourself, giving, nurturing. This is a yin period. I'm getting that this is very slow and just very 
inward. Let's see what else is going on. We have the Three of Cups. So friendship, community, whoever you're talking to or working with or whoever is supporting you is going to be a really big part of you actually embodying more of this as well. So it seems that your community and giving to yourself, there, there's deep nourishment that's happening here. And that's the lesson. If you're not good at receiving that or giving yourself permission to be in this energy, this is the time when you're doing it. Now let's look at the second quarter. We have the four of pentacles. Interesting. So there, there's a lot of withholding that's happening here, except this looks professional to me. This looks like your passions, your projects, be really careful with making things harder than they need to be or overcomplicating things. What The reason why I'm saying that is, like, if you think about this as what you want, what you want is the gold, what you want is the pentacles, right? But it's crowded. There's all of this other stuff that's sitting on top. And so it's kind of like you might be just adding things unnecessarily that really are not meant for you to have there. It's kind of like just strip it away, make it simple. Let yourself just access it. Like if you could snap your fingers and just be complete, like if you could snap your fingers and things could be easy, what what would shift? What what internally would be transforming? It's just beware of overcomplicating or adding unnecessary steps. Okay, and we have the lovers. So is this, does this have something to do with partnership? It could, uh, but also, uh, as always, you guys know how I read. This could have to do with business partnerships, romantic partnerships, friendships, any type of partnership, right, one-on-one. -on -one. Be careful with making that more complicated than it needs to be. Simplify, simplify, simplify. And also be extra careful with being overly conservative with your energy. That's the, my one warning here in this second quarter. You're starting to see the full picture here in the second quarter of how you give to yourself and how you nourish yourself and how you're in relationship or connection with other people. How that really is reflected in your one-on-one -on -one connections, right? Because I'm thinking about the Three of Cups looks like nourishment. It's like having friends around you who are also giving to you. Having friends around you where there is reciprocation, where there is fun. You're accessing that playful, feminine giving to yourself, right? And then as you move through, this next six-week block or six-week period is really going to highlight how giving to yourself has shifted your one-on-one -on -one relationships or the, or the way that you're perceiving people, the way you're working with people. There's, there's evolution on the relationship front, especially since love is kind of the underlying current throughout this entire reading. So again, relationships matter a lot. And then the third quarter, we have temperance, balance, finding equilibrium within yourself. Maybe you've found something at some point here, um, feel like it, knock, it got knocked off balance or it's out of alignment or something is needing to get tweaked. So we have the Knight of Cups. Mm. Uh, you might be reintegrating something, but it also looks, this is looking more like a person to me. So integration, whatever, whoever this Knight of Cups is or whatever, whatever person, because we have manifestations come through people, right? So if you're if you're manifesting money, it can come through a person. If you're manifesting a relationship, it can come through a person. If you're wanting an opportunity, it can come through a person. So think about, you know, this this is a person who's kind of instrumental in however you're balancing, reintegrating, or weaving in an element that you've asked for. 
And the temperance is about you finding your own internal stability with all of this, you finding that independently. This is looking more separate to me. I'm, I think I'm reading two different things here. They might have a little bit of overlap, but for some reason this third quarter is looking like you, you stabilize, you temper yourself, you restructure and reorder yourself. And the Knight of Cups is kind of how, how something is coming through, how something is making an appearance in your life. So you have all of these things to look forward to. And it could also be that you're, you're rebalancing this conservative energy here because the four of pentacles likes to withhold and so i i think you might be working out the rest of those bugs with this temperance energy here and then this is the tail end of 2020 wrapping up the year we have the queen of pentacles knowing what you're doing in a material professional sense this is the earth queen right that earthly material plane that we all want to master so let's see what else we have going on four of pentacles you i'm telling you right now you are your own worst enemy when it comes to all of this all of this is pointing to you are the only one who can get in the way of your full potential. So I think that the goal, the goal or the, the current, the theme that you want to carry with you is stripping away the layers that are preventing you from accessing the greatest, greatest parts of you or the things that you want to experience. Like, are you, are you wanting to start something, but you're making it more complicated than it needs to be? Are you wanting to step into your next level of money, but you're, you're making it more complicated or getting in your own way or letting a, letting a belief or a story kind of run the show instead of you running the show? There's a lot of work to be done around letting go of the layers that's what the second half of 2020 is. Break apart all of the constructs that are withholding you from this. Because love, love is all-encompassing of good things that we experience on the planet. So abundance is love. Alignment is love. Your higher self is love. God is love, right? We, we know all of these things. And so the more you break down those layers, the more you access love, which is everything. Like I said, this is like the, the end all be all where we want to go as a collective, as a spirit. We want to go back into that. So your only job is to recognize when you're getting in your own way and recalibrate as you go. And this is actually, I won't say it's easy, but I will say it's very clear cut. It's very simple. So this is a very straightforward reading where it's like your mind, your distortions and the things that you have obstructing you is of your creation I, I'm saying that lightly, I understand circumstances are complicated, but th this is where you can also say circumstances be damned, environment be damned, I'm going to focus on eliminating all of the resistance that I'm holding within me and allowing myself to access the desires. Because I'm getting that the, the pentacles show up as desires, whatever those may be, and you can slap whatever context you want onto the pentacles, but it's up to you what you what you experience and what you call in. So all is possible. It's just about removing resistance. Now we're going to do your August reading. Let's see what's in store for August. Okay, I'm keeping this simple. It's central energy, what you have shifting out, what you have on coming. So let's look at the central energy for August. We have the world. It's like the eye of the storm, right? So a lot of things are coming up. A lot of stuff is getting stirred up in August. It looks very busy in August. So this is also why the Empress shows up in August 
to get, help remind you to give to yourself at this time with the busyness. And this looks like internal busyness, maybe not external busyness, but the, the turbulence, the stuff to work through is all coming out to play in August. So you're going to have to sort through, sift through the limitations, the obstructions, the resistance, the discouragement that you hold internally and breaking that down to make way for better things. What you have shifting out is the three of chalices. So that's what was up here. And I'm getting that there there's something about you not needing to rely on others. It's like sometimes friends can be really helpful to reassure us or remind us of what we're capable of or what we want, what we're doing. And I'm just getting that you're actually evolving out of that. You're kind of coming into a space where you can see things clearly for yourself and exactly what's happening in your internal world. Like you're, you're getting really good at being the observer. And so there's less of a need for reflections from others, which this is an exciting jump that I'm seeing you make because it's about self-trust that's coming through in August. And then the oncoming energy is the seven of wands rising above the challenges coming out of any forms of resistance or frustration and friction, and instead kind of rising to the top, allowing yourself to be, to be successful. Because the Seven of Wands is the hardship is over. I'm, I'm kind of rising above and coming out of the weeds and being able to step into your greatness and hold that capacity. So as you witness yourself and the, you know, the, the ego stories that you tell yourself or your shadow self kind of leading you into distraction or whatever the case, the more you observe and, and recognize that these things are not ultimately true, that's what's allowing you to witness but not fall into the stories, reframe and then work your way out of any friction that you're experiencing. Let's do a three card pick. You're welcome to ask for guidance, clarity, whatever you're needing in this moment. Just go ahead and set the intention. If you need more time, pause the video. Card number one. We have the tower. This is dismantling everything that we've discussed here, which is the structures that you hold within, while at some point they were helpful or beneficial, they might not be working for you in present time. So in order for you to get to the next step or get to the next uh, layer of work, level of wealth, level of love, you have to let the old shit die. You, you have to let it fall away. Don't, um, don't look at this tower as an indication of like things breaking down and, and you getting blindsided. No, no, no. We already know what's happening. We already know that you have to be experiencing some level of breakdown. That's what this entire reading was about the resistance and the structures need to come down so that you can access more love, so that you can get into that abundant space, so that you can actually make room to hold more within yourself, more of all the good things that you want. Card number two, we have the Ace of Wands. This is the You've Got It card. It's a confirmation, a solid yes, and it's also about initiating your your energy. It's like you pushing the boulder first. That's what's coming through here. So don't wait. This is the time to initiate yourself. You need, you need to get it going first. Card number three, we have the Ace of Swords. This is about thought and the mental body. The mental body is where the, the transformation is really going to take place for you, or that's where the problem slash solution are living. It's in the mental body. So if you turn to what am I thinking? What story am I telling myself? What am I observing happening internally? You're going to have more to work with. The main guidance, the main message here is focus intently on the mental body, the thoughts 
and rewire, rewrite, reconstruct all of those. That's what needs to happen here. Address the mind first and then, you know, stay diligent, stay on top of that again and again and again and see what happens as a result. Thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure. And before you go, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment if anything resonated. Check me out on Instagram at Onyx Healing. And if you would like more content from me, make sure you sign up for my newsletter. Good things come to you in my newsletter, and you can stay up to date on everything. All of the info that you need is in the description box if you'd like to work with me or check out all of the other offers that I have. Just check below. All of the decks that I've used in the reading today are also listed as well. I'm sending you so much love and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.